Coliseum in Corvallis. Tonight, here on Ralph Miller Court, the Beavers of Oregon State will play host to the Thunderbirds of Southern Utah, a team that played last season in the NCAA tournament. The rally squad is here, and so are the fans. Getting ready to see the Beavers and the T-Birds get it on. Hi, everybody. Scott Lynn along with Todd McKim. Nice to have you with us here tonight on the Beaver Sports Network. The Beavers played pretty well in the Great Alaska Shootout before returning home this week. That's right. The first night out, they played Texas. Close game, but lost at the end. Next night out, St. John's, an NCAA tournament team, played well, lost at the end. Came back to defeat the host team, Alaska Anchorage. Flew home Sunday, Monday night, defeated San Diego. This is a team that's playing good basketball right now and feeling confident. Well, Oregon State has a lot of new players on the team this year, a lot of new faces for you Beaver fans, but one face you will recognize is that of 6'5 guard Adam Mastin. Adam Mastin is the son of a coach, and he does those same things on the court. You can see his numbers for the season are modest, but his contribution is big. Eight points, 3.2 assists, a couple of steals. He's a guy that's going to control things, make sure everybody's in the right spot, and that'll be important tonight. Another Beaver guard who should figure prominently in tonight's game is Jimmy Haywood, and he's coming off a great game, Todd. Jimmy had a career-tying high, 20 points Monday night in the victory over San Diego, and the key was he hit from the outside, three for three on three-point shots. He's a great athlete, but more important tonight will be his shooting ability because the T-Birds will play exclusively zone defense. Well, Southern Utah has just one starter back from that NCAA tournament team a year ago, but boy, is he a good one, Dan Buse. Dan Buse is a senior returning starter, lead this club in virtually every statistical category points rebounds and assists as well and that's unusual for a guy that's putting up about 16 shots a game he is a legitimate player earlier this year against stanford down on the farm he had 23 points this guy can play at a high level and he will have to tonight for the t-birds to stay in it the beavers will try to power inside to their pac-10 newcomer of the year candidate philip ritchie you beaver fans are going to enjoy watching him play these next two seasons the Beavers and the T-Birds are ready to go, and you'll see it live on the Beavers Sports Network, and these guys are ready. Tonight's game on the Beavers Sports Network is being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, by Reesers. With Reesers, you've got it made. The professional electricians and contractors of NECA and IBEW Local 48, Apollo Pools and Billiards. When it comes to family fun, Apollo is the one. Standard TV and Appliance with locations in Portland, Tigard, and Beaverton. By Bud Light, proud sponsors of OSU Athletics. Pacific Power, do the bright thing. Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. And by Fullerton and & Company and Kemper Insurance, where quality is never an accident. How you doing? How you doing? Hello. These guys took care of that thing, right? Hey, Mikey, we take care of that thing? Hey, Nikki, you took care of that thing, right? Yeah, sure, come on, please. Hey, did you take care of that thing yet? Oh. Yeah. yeah? You took care of that thing, right? Hold on. Yeah. Steer it Yeah. You took care of that thing, right? Gary? Gary? Reesers is often asked, what are the secret ingredients that make Reesers salsas so delicious? They're not about to tell you. Well, maybe they are willing to give you a small hint or two. Delicious oh, Reese's sure. salsas, specially blended and always chilled with spices no, that... Why don't you just tell them what the spices are? Well, okay. To start, there's a pinch of cumin, a dash no, of... Oregano. How do you turn this off? Reese's salsa, not the most secret ingredients, just the best tasting. Secret? What secret? Hi, I'm Richard Dunn with the WB32 weather team and a member of this year's Team Diabetes. And I'm Dave Harkin, one of the coaches for Teen Diabetes. Join us this Friday starting at 1 o'clock as this year's Teen Diabetes attempts 150 miles on a treadmill in 24 hours to raise money for the ADA. You can find us at the Portland Running Company in Beaverton on Shoals Ferry Road. We'll see you there. The Holiday Power Sale, this Saturday from 9 to 9. Shop early for incredible doorbusters from 9 to 11. You can save on men's Levi's jeans at the lowest prices of the year. Save 34% on women's sweaters and great-looking outerwear. Save 30% on men's dress shirts, neckwear, and dress slacks. Remember, gift wrapping is free. The Holiday Power Sale. Shopping never felt better. Russ Auto Group's 30-year anniversary and carsoup.com bring you car soup for the soul. Soothe your soul at carsoup.com. Peace, love, and car soup. 
For a really great deal on a set of wheels, come to Gary Worth Used Cars on McLaughlin and Gladstone with savings on select grand marquees that'll knock your socks off. There's no better buy in a select sedan than one of our hand-picked, pre-owned grand marquees, priced to sell at just a shadow of their full value. At Gary Worth, we have a full million-dollar inventory of quality preferred vehicles. Come for a test drive. We'll make it worth the trip. That's Gary Worth, Lincoln Mercury, on McLaughlin Boulevard in Gladstone. Reba's daughter is newly married. I actually have to think about his feelings. It's so unfair. Reba. Saturday night at 9 on Portland's WB32. Welcome back to Gil Coliseum in Corvallis. The fans are up and ready for this one. Uh, Richie McKay's basketball team getting ready to take on Southern Utah. Non-conference game. But a game that's important to both clubs uh, for various reasons. Tom? Well, every game counts if you're thinking about postseason play. And, of course, for the T-Birds, it's an opportunity to play a good team on the road, get a nice paycheck as well. And for Oregon State, you know, it's a chance to try to get another victory and get further over the 500 mark. There you see the starting lineup for the uh, T-Birds. It's Collins and Johnson at the guard spots. Aaron Miles, not the Aaron Miles that played at Jefferson High School, we should point out. This guy's 6'8", 195 pounds. Jackson and Buse are the forwards. As Todd mentioned, Buse nursing an ankle injury. We saw him at the shoot-around, and he was really limping around here. He's got it taped up, and he's going to try to play tonight. And as Todd said, he is a good, good player with a great stroke. The coach of the T-Birds is Bill Evans in his 10th season. He has a record of 139 wins, 125 losses. He needs only seven more wins to pass Stan Jack as the winningest men's basketball coach ever at SUU. Took his team to the NCAA tournament a year ago. Nice, nice fella. We had a chance. are saying hey what about us well they're up on their feet right here as their team is introduced the starting lineups for the beavers adam maston and floyd north along with jimmy haywood philip ritchie and brian jackson the key here inside guys ritchie and jackson yeah because they're going to have a size and more importantly a weight advantage against uh, Southern Utah. And I think also interesting tonight is no real true what you would call point guard. Jimmy Haywood and Adam Maston probably will handle the basketball. Floyd, a wing player. So it'll be interesting to see who does most of the ball handling. Richie McKay in his second year at Oregon State. Last season, the Beavers were 10 and 20, an injury-filled year. It was a long year in many respects for that fella, but he and his coaching staff very excited about the prospects. He likes how this team is coming together. He is. He said his team has played some outstanding basketball, the one thing they lack, and that's to be expected at this stage of the season with so many newcomers, is consistency. And quite frankly, there are very few teams in the country right now that are consistent. It's all part of the learning process. The preseason schedule set that up because not too far down the road in just a couple of weeks, the opening of Pac-10 play. Well, you see some young guys right there, Sample, and uh, you got J.S. Nash as well. You, you, uh, we should mention Floyd North is a true freshman. There are two other true freshmen who will play tonight, J.S. Nash and Joe C. And uh, it's a very young Beaver team against a team from Southern Utah that has a little age on it. Yeah, the youngest player on their roster that we could see tonight is 20 years of age. And a couple of these guys are 23 and 24 years old. The Beavers in the home white, Southern Utah, the T-Birds in the road jerseys, the dark jerseys. And keep an eye on number 33. is right there in the middle of your screen. That's Juice, and he's going to try to get the ball first. Maston chasing, and, and it's out of bounds, and it will be Beaver basketball. Well, the first heady play of the night for Adam Maston. He didn't give up on that ball. He was didn't look like he was going to be the first to get to it, but he hustled it down, and Oregon State will have the first possession. This is Brian Jackson and now Jimmy Haywood. This is Philip Ritchie, number 31. You'll get to know him throughout the uh, evening and the season. Big time player. Already has a couple double doubles for Oregon State. Tried to get it uh, over across the other side and picked off by Collins, who takes it the other way for Seattle. Oregon State opens up in the man-to-man -man defense and immediately a turnover as they're unable to handle the basketball. Stan Johnson lost it down low. I'm going to talk about this Southern Utah zone. It's a little bit unusual. It's a 1-1-3 one, one, look as opposed to, you know, a lot of teams not play the 2-3 or the 3-2. Three, so it's a 1-1-3, one, one, three, three guys on the baseline. But it's an aggressive zone defense. They don't just sit back in the paint and make you shoot outside. They'll trap in the corners as we saw right there. Maston, this is North. Maston gets it to Haywood. 
Might have got away with steps. Now back to Haywood. Now shoots, forces it a little bit. Whistle and a foul underneath. Going to be called on Oregon State. Well, you can see how fast and quick that zone was. Oregon State was never able to penetrate the zone. They do a nice job with the off guard of cutting off any drives to the basket. So Oregon State's going to have to shoot the basketball from the perimeter tonight against this tough zone defense. Brian Jackson picked up the first personal foul, his first of the game, and he is the guy that the Beavers have to keep out of foul trouble. He's somewhat prone to foul trouble. Southern Utah kick it. This is Buse. Dumps it inside, turnover. Buse had a good look to Jackson. Donnie Jackson fumbles it away, and now the Beavers in transition. The zone gets set up in a hurry. Well, both of these teams uh, have played good defense so far this year. Oregon State's holding its opponents to only 40% from the field. Trying to get it inside to Richie. He stayed after, but it knocked out of bounds to Southern Utah. We haven't had any points yet. Over a minute and a half play. Well, Oregon State is going to try to attack this zone defense with their big guys near the foul line area. Jackson and Richie can maybe throw over the zone a little bit and cause some problems. This is Buse. He has range from there and a great looking shot. And a work it here. He was about to make their first substitution in the game. Joe C, a guard, who's uh, at the scorer's table. That was a pretty good look. No good. Beavers have it. This is North. North stepped out of bounds. Turnover. And coming into the game will be Joe C, true freshman from Martinez, California. North heads to the bench. He's out of Lemon Grove, California. He'll sit down and We'll see now a true point guard come into the game. Just 5'11 and a great shooter, although Beaver fans haven't seen it yet. No, they haven't. He's only 2 of 18 from the field, but you know, a good shooter has to keep tossing them up there, and eventually they'll start falling. You know, the Beavers are hoping tonight's the night. Three-point shot. No good there by Collins. Rebound. Use. No good. Here's Jackson with it, and here come the Beavers. First chance in transition, really. C caught up to it. Now Haywood. Jackson for three, and he's fouled. Hard foul there by Donnie Jackson. Jackson, the leading shot blocker for the T-Birds, 1.3 per game. But this one, he came up and got a lot of body. Well, you can see the opportunity is shot here, and you can see just hammered as uh, Brian Jackson has three-point shooting capabilities, and now he gets three in this situation. Jackson, 71% shooter on the year from the line. You see the numbers for the season, 14 points a game. Second high to Philip Ritchie, who's averaging just close to 18 with nine rebounds. Those are the kind of numbers that I know Ritchie McKay wants to get from Jackson and Ritchie. I really do believe those two have to combine on a nightly basis for somewhere between 35 and 40 points and probably 15 to 16, 17 rebounds. They're, at this point, the two biggest guys on the roster. Derek Potter still sitting out with that stress fracture in the left leg. So Richie and Jackson will have to carry the load inside. All three free throws are down by Jackson and the Beavers with the first points of the night. Long three by Buse, no good. Working hard was Jackson for the rebound and up and in, he's fouled. He'll go to the line to try to tie the game. You can see the offensive rebounding and this is an area that's hurt the Beavers this year. They gave up 18 offensive boards to St. John's. They've been out rebounded by six a game so far this season. And that one, Mastin just was not able to box out. And a good, strong move to the basket for Jackson and a chance for three. Jackson, junior college transfer out of Fort Arthur, Texas, went to Utah Valley State. He was the team MVP last year, 12 points, seven rebounds, and he ties the game here about three minutes in. This is Josie bringing the basketball up the floor. In the corner, here comes that double team. He just try to wheel it in a hurry. Haywood, Master. Now C for three. His third triple of the season. He was having a tough time. Didn't get any shots to drop at all in the first three games, but he hits his first here tonight. Big sigh of relief, not only from Joe C, but also that Oregon State bench offensive foul. Good defense by Brian Jackson getting position on view. And that's a big call. If it goes the other way, it's foul number two for Jackson about three and a half minutes in. Well, Joe C quickly off the bench tonight. Here's the offensive foul. Jackson, you got to move your feet. Ooh. 
And uh, <laughs> Buse just ducking that right shoulder. Yeah. That's probably why that foul was called. Yeah, I'm not so sure he was set, but Buse did lower the shoulder and drove into him, and that's going to be a turnover for the Beavers. They lead it 6-3. Richie McKay talking with the official. The officiating crew tonight, Dick Cartmel, Billy Gianquinto, and Martin Cota. Pac-10 crew. Not a large crowd tonight necessarily on the night before the Civil War football game, but it's pretty boisterous and you see that they're up on their feet again. A uh, good job of pressure by Jimmy Haywood, but a better job of denying the passing lanes by his teammates. Oregon State coming off a win over San Diego. They survived a 17 nothing run in that game Monday night. Came back and got the win. Now, offensive foul. Offensive foul. That's two on him, and let's see if Richie leaves him out there. Now that's one he can't take. It's a blocking foul trying to set up a screen for the shooter, Joe C. And those are the fouls that drive coaches nuts because they're not fouls of aggression. You can live with a couple of rebounding fouls, but a foul setting a pick. Yeah. North is coming to the scores table. He'll check in for Jackson, I'm sure. The key here is for Brian not to pick up his third while he's still on the floor. Inside, knocked away. This is Donnie Jackson. Trying to get it to Buse. You can see they want to look for him every time down. And now another offensive foul. Jackson with the charge. That was good help by Oregon State because Joe C had got caught on a switch. He was guarding Buse. They were trying to post him up, and the defense collapsed and forced the turnover. Turnover. The Beavers will have it when we come back. OSU leading 6-3. Whether an electrical job is large or small, it's important to get the job right the first time. That's why the switch to safety is on to NECA IBEW Local 48. Our electrical contractors set the highest industry standards in safety for today's complex electrical work. And our electricians receive the most comprehensive education and safety training in the business, assuring you of a job right the first time. The switch to safety is on to NECA IBEW Local 48. Bill Shonley here at Standard TV and Appliance Portland showroom with a huge selection of top brand big screens. Now take it from me, my friends. These new Mitsubishi big screens have crisper colors and amazing detail. And for a limited time at Standard, save on every Mitsubishi big screen and high definition widescreen with no down payment, no interest, and no payments to 2003. That's your big screen headquarters, Standard TV and Appliance. Apollo Billiards and Pools invites you to our new Brunswick Pavilion Showroom, an entire floor dedicated to pool tables and accessories. There's bar stools, tables, cues, and racks. Even customize your table's wood and fabric. Take advantage now and lay away for the holidays. Call for details. From pool tables to poker tables, you'll find it all at Apollo Billiards and Pools. When it comes to family fun, Apollo is the one. Apollo. Oregon State leading Southern Utah, 6-3, to three, first half score in Corvallis. You know, the Beavers' uh, December schedule includes a trip to Portland's Rose Garden. That's coming up on Wednesday, December 12th, to take on the Portland State Vikings. And then on to December 20th, the Beavers will return to Gill to play Arizona. Last year, the Wildcats battled Duke for the NCAA championship, and they have reloaded. Then the Sun Devils on the 22nd, Indiana Purdue on the 27th, Lehigh on the 31st. For tickets to any Oregon State University athletic event, call 1-800-GO-BEAVES. Scott Lynn and Todd McKim with you on the Beaver Sports Network. Oregon State on top of Southern Utah, 6-3. See, trying to get it inside, Maston thought three. Trying to get it into Richie. There it is, inside power game, 8-3 Beavers. That was a nice pass by Joe C, a tough handle for Richie, but you can see he has good hands and he can finish inside. He's a guy that's uh, capable of a double-double on any given night. Beavers playing the tough man defense. Turnovers even at five in this game. Collins working on Richie. Tries to get it inside and does up and in. That was Aaron Miles, his first two of the night. A nice assist by Collins. You know, Bill Evans has been talking that uh, Collins has been averaging 10 shots a game. He needs him as a point guard to have a point guard's mentality. He's been 
more but two guard throughout his career, so he has to make that adjustment to be a distributor as opposed to a point producer. Well, the last couple games they could use the point production because Buse was out for the last game and a half. He did come up with a team-high 21 points against Idaho State, a game that Buse was injured and had 12 points against Adam State uh, in the game on Tuesday night. Miles looking inside. This is a long shot by Collins, no good. Richie the board. Here comes Maston and the Beavers. There will be very few breakaway opportunities for either team tonight. Both teams get back nicely defensively. It'll be tough to get easy back. North for three. Floyd North with his first three-pointer as an Oregon State Beaver. And important for Oregon State, they've hit two bombs so far. And they're going to have to do that the rest of the night. Southern Utah made 11 of 25 three-pointers against Stanford. This That's team it. played Stanford pretty well, as a matter of fact, we should point out. Yeah, they were down by only eight points with eight minutes to play. They're shooting 45% for the season on three-point shots. Now, Buse lost the handle, and it's a turnover. Checking into the game now, Jeff Dorenbosch, 6'9", senior out of Magna, Utah. Miles sits down. Well, the T-Birds have some size. They don't have a lot of bulk. A lot of these guys are in the 6'8 to 6'10 range, but only weigh about 220 pounds. So Richie at 250, and Jackson up there as well. Ooh, look out at him. Pump fake got him in the air, and Collins landed on top of him. Adam Maston says, I'm okay. Checking in for Oregon State now is number 02, Brandon Payton. He is the half-brother of Gary Payton, who wore the retired number 20, hence the 02 in honor of his half-brother. He should have worn 10 then. That would have been a half. half that would make sense to me. <laughs> Good ball movement. Ski behind the back. Peyton. You can see the Beavers have worked against this zone. That three no good. They're going to call travel, and that's a tough call as Richie was going after it too. Yeah, I agree. That is a tough call. And, you know, the, in the literal sense of the word, that is traveling. But I uh, hate to see a good hustle play yeah. denied because of something like that. Brian Gardner, number 25, checked in for Southern Utah. Boy, they get out to you on a hurry. There is no easy shot here, is there? No. And they have good anticipation. They're very well schooled in this zone. I mean, they really haven't played man-to-man -man at all for about two years, and so they know what they're doing and where they should be. Maston for three. Adam Maston busted. He's shooting 35% from downtown. That's his seventh three-pointer of the season. And the Beavers now with their biggest lead, nine at 14 to five. I'm sure the scouting report on Oregon State, play them zone, make them shoot from distance. They're only a 27% team. Good ball fake by Maston. The defender went for the fake. Maston with a nice, comfortable three-point opportunity. Well, you know, Richie McKay was telling you and I today, Todd, that if the Beavers had shot, say, 35 to 40% from three-point range, they'd be four and one or maybe five and oh. Well, ifs, ands, and candies, and butts, and all of that, but they played some good basketball at the Great Alaska Shootout. That Texas and St. John's games very yeah, easily yeah. could have been victories. Double-digit leads in both of those. There's a nice-looking shot by Gardner. Brian Gardner. Former All-Stater from Fruitland, Idaho, 6'2 senior. He has played his college ball at Snow College. A lot of J.C. players. They do have a lot of J.C.s. In fact, uh, J.C. And married at JC's, it turns out. And older players, you know, that's the advantage they have. We'll get into their recruiting a little bit later. But nine of the 16 players on this team are transfers from either a junior college or some other program. And eight of the players on the roster are married. Jarman Sample in the line. Wow. Very unusual. Yeah. Jarman Sample checks in for Oregon State. Philip Ritchie's going to get a breather here. Well, Richie McKay's done a nice job here of substituting. He's getting a lot of guys in the basketball game early. Lord, with nice penetration to Peyton for three. His fifth of the season. He's had a little bit of uh, last couple games really hasn't shot all that much, but he was looking to shoot there. You know, when you're, you're going to go against a team that only plays one type of defense, you really have all your practice time to prepare against that. So Oregon State has had a good opportunity to pre prepare to play against zone only. And as a result, they know where to go. They're getting some good opportunity shots. And those shots, for the first time this season, are dropping. Collins drives, dishes to Gardner for three. Good shooter. Ryan Gardner. Ryan Gardner knocks it down, and it's 17-10. We're seeing some good three-point shooting here in the early going. Richie McKay 
says uh, with the stoppage of play it looks like an official's timeout here as the, the net was hung up for a moment so they call a timeout on the court we'll take a break and come right back Beavers lead by seven. The holiday power sale this Saturday from nine to nine. Shop early for incredible door busters from nine to eleven. You can save on men's Levi's jeans at the lowest prices of the year. Save 34% on women's sweaters and great looking outerwear. Save 30% on men's dress shirts, neckwear, and dress slacks. Remember, gift wrapping is free. The holiday power sale. Shopping never felt better. No matter what your favorite sport is, it's the experience, talent, and spirit of the players that make them winners. And that's what you get when you have CarStar on your team. Basketball is definitely a team sport, and every player counts. That's why you need CarStar on your team. CarStar will work with your insurance company and provide a nationwide guarantee. CarStar, a name you can trust. When you need quality collision repair, be a winner. Put CarStar on your team. Call 1-800-CARSTAR for the nearest CarStar location. You know where Jared's headed today. He's going for the great taste at Subway. And you know exactly what he's gonna eat. It's turkey and veggies, his daily treats. Actually, Subway has a lot of other great tasting sandwiches I love too. Oh, right. Subway has seven delicious sandwiches with just six grams of fat or less. Like our six inch roasted chicken breast sandwich. All made on fresh baked gourmet bread and all made fresh right in front of you. Subway, eat fresh. Welcome back to Corvallis. Scott Lynn along with Todd McKim, Oregon State leading Southern Utah 17 to 10. 11 16 left in the first half. A reminder women's basketball returns to Gil Coliseum Thursday, December 6th, when the Beavers take on the University of Portland Pilots at 7. Then two great wrestling matches are happening in December. Wednesday, the 12th, it's the Civil War with the Ducks. And on the 16th, it's number four, Oklahoma State coming to Gil. Boy, that'll be a great one. 1 800 Go Bees for tickets to any OSU athletic event. Oregon State has five players with three points apiece. That comes from four three-pointers and then the three free throws for Jackson. Also, Philip Ritchie with two points. Brian Gardner leads Southern Utah with five. Buse still looking for his first points of the game. Oregon State's going to rotate players on Buse, mix it up a little bit. The different guys will be watching him, Jackson, a little bit, to maybe North, possibly Ritchie. Give him different looks. Massage had that pump fake result in a couple of fouls drawn. And... Uh, Thought he was going to do that again right there in the corner. North almost lost the handle. Master kicks. Back to Master. You can see they want to get the good shot. Three other shot clock. C saw it. North hammers it. Well, unfortunately for Oregon State, C shot was well long, but it just did graze the back iron. And North, who's an outstanding athlete, skying high for the rebound on the flush. Boy, athlete is the word. One of the best out of San Diego area all time. He scored over 2,000 points in his high school career. One of only five players to do that down in San Diego County. Strong to the basket. Whistle foul. Collins will go to the free throw line. Beavers foul. Adam Mastin. Mastin picking up the personal foul. North, let's see if he's all right. Kind of limping off a bit. Jay Collins at the line for the team. Collins will go to the line to shoot a couple. He is the team's top free throw shooter. 88% made 15 of 17 this year. Let's see. North is over there talking to the official saying, I don't know. I think he is going to have to come out of the game. Yeah. I hope it's nothing serious. That maybe uh, just a knee to a knee, but Sandy Sandigo is going to check him out. Phil Ritchie came in to replace him. Beavers by nine. Collins hits the first free throw. North heading to the training room, it looks like, with Sandy Sandego. Big changes here for Southern Utah during the free throw attempt. Well, Southern Utah will play 10, 11 guys every game, and Oregon State's kind of getting in that mode, too. A lot more depth this year for Oregon State than last year. Of course, Derek Potter right now is out, but uh, last year, remember a lot of games, Scott, they only had you know, six, maybe six or seven guys either eligible or healthy or whatever. Well, you remember that game, I think it was against Cal. The yeah. Beavers had only five guys uh, left at the end of the game, and three of them had four fouls. Yeah, they were about ready to play the manager. <laughs> Three-point shooting certainly favoring the Beavers to this point. This is Sample. He's in trouble. Yes. Let's see. 
Gets it to Richie. He was in the lane a while, but got it. Put it in. Beavers by 10. Well, that's the second time that Joe C has been able to penetrate the zone and find that Richie with a bounce pass for an easy two. Jackson. Good look. This is Gardner. We're on the other side with Kevin Henry. This is a good athlete right here. I like watching him work. Might have got away with a walk, but he's a good looking player. Kevin Henry. And Richie McKay is definitely calling for a walk on that 360 move. 360 and then some. 360 and 61. <laughs> Henry actually coming off his first start. Tuesday night against Adam Stavis. Peyton looking for the shot. And up over the top is going to be a foul on Sample. Jarman Sample, sophomore, junior college transfer from Macon, Georgia. Played one year at Colby Community College in Kansas. Well, when you look at Oregon State on the floor right now, only one player on the court now that played last year. That's Jimmy Haywood. That's right. Everybody else was either playing in high school or junior college or redshirt in the case of Peyton and Richie. Richie, of course, had a knee scoped in the preseason a year ago. They decided to redshirt him. It was going to be a tough year anyway. I think that first year for many coaches, always a tough transition year. Whistle on a foul. Richie, the foul. Richie picks up the foul now coming into the game. Number 22, that is J.S. Nash, a true freshman from Moreno Valley, California. This guy averaged 32 points, eight rebounds, and five steals last year in high school. He's a left-hander, has a very good shot, strong. You see him for a freshman, weighs about 190, 195. He's going to be an outstanding player. In fact, the, the Oregon State coaches compare him a little bit to a Ray Bloom, Mark Radford type guy. Miles with a nice-looking bank shot. This is a guy that's getting to play for the first time in his career. He's a two-year letter winner, but only averaged about three and a half minutes a game in his first two seasons, and now as a starter, averaging close to 10 points a game. And he's a hometown product from Cedar City, Utah. Community of about 20,000. Haywood, nice drive to the basket. Million dollar move, 10 cent finish. Yeah, may, maybe a nickel finish. <laughs> but the Beavers have it. Only five on the shot clock. Sample doesn't know it. Maston does. That's a pretty good look. Now that's a million dollar finish from a senior. He knew that was coming. He knew uh, how much time was on the shot clock. And now he leads the break to Haywood. He wants another one. <laughs> I thought he was launching. Look at that move. Oh, Philip Ritchie inside. No. Rebound by Sample up and in. And one. Boy, the Beavers showing they can get after it this year. They're up 11. That, this is a classic example of a guy with an offensive rebounding mentality not giving up. Richie shot. I mean, that should be in, right? Sample says, no, I'm going to go to the backboard and try to get that when he does and just overpowers the defender, Baker, for the rebound. You know, he took one step the other way first. Then he came back and got it. That's a great effort. Look, Philip Richie says, thanks for saving my bacon. Because Philip thought it was home. Yes, sir. Sample going to the free throw line. His first free throw attempt of the year coming up right now. Back-to-back -back offensive rebounds, Scott, that Oregon State's been able to convert into hoops and potential three-point plays. Rebounding is really where Oregon State's been hurting this year. Been outboarded by six a game on average and uh, have not out-rebounded anybody all season. But right now, the Beavers are up 12, 27, 15 over Division I Southern Utah. complicated do you think your personal insurance is? Just think of what you own and lease. Your home, perhaps a vacation home, cars, recreational vehicles, jewelry, computers, sporting goods, collections, and on and on. What would happen if fire or theft occurred? Or water damage? Do you really know you're properly covered? Fullerton and Company. The name means insurance. Car and 
driver rated our Subaru WRX higher than the Audi S4 Quattro and the BMW 330xi in both handling and acceleration from 0 to 60. But in one important category, Audi and BMW did rate much higher. That's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. Welcome back to Core Battles, Oregon State leading 7, Utah 27, 15, 750 left in the first half. Scott Lynn along with Todd McKim and Adam Mastin is the game's top scorer with six points thanks to two of two from three-point range. Including a bomb just moments ago as you can see the shot clock winding down and from about 25 feet all twine had a good look. Yeah, we talked about being this son of a coach. He knew exactly what the situation was. He knew he had to shoot and he drained it. Maston last season played over a thousand minutes, 84 percent of his team's minutes. He was able to play. Foul on Haywood coming around to try to block the shot. Fans didn't like it. We saw that graphic moments ago. Oregon State five of eight from beyond the arc came into tonight shooting 27 percent. They'd had 23 three pointers in five games, a little over four a game. They have five tonight. So just what the doctor ordered when it comes to attacking this zone is to have some guys draining three pointers. Jason Baker at the free throw line. He'd been seven of eight prior to that miss. Baker, a sophomore from South Jordan, Utah, went to Bingham High School, was a first team all stater in the 5A level. He was the 5A defensive player of the year in Utah. Now we see a press. Press after the made free throw. It's just an extension of their 1 1 3. Brian Jackson's back in the game now for Oregon State. Wood Maston. Nag. This is Haywood. North is out there as well. Jackson for three. No good. Up high for the rebound there. Number 40, Chris Wallen, is in the game for Southern Utah. He's a big guy. 6'11, 240. Out of Mesa, Arizona. Southern Utah has some Arizona players on its roster. And, and to recruit those players, they drive. And the recruiting budget isn't the biggest uh, in the world, so they have to drive to a lot of their places to recruit. And Phoenix is about eight hours away, so they uh, are able to milk a few players out of that area. Good community college and junior college action in that Phoenix area, and also in the Utah area as well. You can saw the, uh, saw, see the Beavers, they forced the turnover there, and it was nice to see North back in the game here. We remember he went off with the knee or ankle there a moment ago, but he is back, and he was the one that started that turnover by knocking it away from behind down in the low blocks. Two true freshmen on the floor for Oregon State and a junior college transfer. Experience in the backcourt with Haywood and Mastin. Mastin's done a very good job directing the club tonight. Nash, good shooter. Doesn't get that one to go and use the rebound. And conversely, this is not a great offensive rebounding club for Oregon State. They basically have set up for the most of the night with four guys on the perimeter. So you're not going to get a lot of offensive rebounds for that setup. That's a three and down it goes. Collins knocks it home. Jay Collins for three. Seeing some three-point shooting here. 27-19. Beavers lead down to eight with 6.15 to play. First half. Nash can create some things. There again, Maston almost got hammered. Being a lefty, players just don't expect guys to go left. No, they don't. It's a little bit unusual. I think it's a great advantage. And he's had a couple of good looks and is a good shooter. If you watch this guy in practice, you know he's going to be a great shooter for Oregon State. But just having a little tough time getting out of the box as a true freshman. Well, abuse with the traveling violation. He's having a tough time getting started tonight. Still looking for his first point. I think he's thinking about the ankle a little bit, too. You, yeah. you could see him grimacing a bit in the pregame warm-ups and the severe ankle sprain just six days ago. That's, a, that's a quick comeback. Then. That is a quick comeback. C is in the game with the basketball. Now Maston. Haywood. Boy, they really make it tough for you to get that ball even back out on top, don't they? Cross court, Maston. Now North. C. Haywood. You can't beat it usually with a dribble. Tough to beat a zone with a dribble. But you can create some stuff for your partners out there. And C, with a nice move, doesn't get it to go. And uh, that ball did not hit the uh, rim, no. so it should be a shot clock by And right you are. Looked like Sample wanted a held ball, but the uh, shot clock was a buzzing. 
Violation 514 to play. Now the T-Birds are right back in. This team doesn't quit, and part of it might be that age difference, Todd. These guys don't. Right, you've, got, you've got more mature players. I mean, you know, they've been in more situations. They've played a lot more basketball. And life, being older, many with families. Three-point shot there, nothing at all. Maybe a little bit of net, but it was nothing but net, if at all. Yes, that's a dry <laughs> heave. <laughs> Collins has struggled from the three-point line this year. Only three of 11 coming into tonight's game. He had a good look there. Inside five minutes to play, first half. Peters leading by eight. Turnover. Well, one too many no-look bounce passes by Joe C. This is good. Every time Collins touches it now, the fans in the Beaver Dam right behind us are saying air ball. You probably can hear him. Now that's not an air ball. It was rim only, no good. North the rebound. Offensive foul on Sample. Sample just uh, didn't realize the situation and ran over Collins. I tell you what, players on both of these teams are not afraid to step in there and take the offensive foul. I like that. Both tough defense. Both of these coaches do great jobs. You mentioned earlier Bill Evans from Southern Utah. Had his team 25 and 6 last year. Led the school to the share of the Mid-Continent Conference, the regular season title, and got the first postseason championship, a first NCAA tournament appearance. They lost in the first round of the NCAA, but only by three to Boston College. Yeah, they had a great year, and unfortunately, with the great year, they lose four seniors. And that's part of the problem with continuity for Southern Utah, is that when you're constantly in the junior college mode, you're always reloading every two years you've got to turn over your roster and quite frankly it's almost every year and that makes it tough to have continuity but they've done a great job last year of course it paid off for the the big prize to the tournament only five Letterman back from that team so again lots of JC's coming in I think it was seven initially there are six on the roster now Richie might have got away with a walk as well but it's up and in Beavers lead it 29 21 good recognition by Joe C about a 50 foot pass that Actually, could have been a lob pass. Richie could have finished it off the pass, but they did the nice job, came down, settled, and got the easy two. Inside for two, Donnie Jackson. Donnie Jackson. And again, you'll see Southern Utah hang around and keep it close. And it might surprise some Beaver fans watching tonight here on the Beaver Sports Network. I know there were people who came up and said, why are the Beavers playing a Division II team? Well, they're, they're not. not. They're not. <laughs> and this is a pretty pretty decent team, kind of like Oregon State. New players trying to find themselves as a group. Maston, long three. Oh, my goodness. You better believe it. Who's on fire? 32. I tell you what, he would win a lot of games a horse right now. I mean, yeah. that, one, that one was shot with 11 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, but you know what? Make him shoot him right-handed then. <laughs> Going to have an offensive foul inside. Call against Donnie Jackson. Adam Maston bombs away. Holy cow. Bill Evans is saying, why did Oregon State pick tonight to come out of their shooting slump? And he told us that today. He exactly. said, you know, it'll be tonight, watch. Yeah. And so far, he's been prophetic. He was up now, and Maston going to the free throw line right here. That was the third foul on Jackson, too. So one of Southern Utah's more athletic players has to go to the bench for the rest of the half. Well, the Beavers have done a nice job on Buse. He's had, had only uh, two field goal attempts, no points tonight. Maston gets the first to go. 86% shooter on the year. There's Jackson having to sit down. Well, Maston had an excellent tournament up in Anchorage at the shootout. He averaged 10 points, shot 64% from the field in that tournament. Buse the rebound there. Still working hard. That's his third board of the game. Miles, the center, launching the three, no good. Buse go, go, got the go. loose ball in his first points of the night. Beavers don't want to let him get off now. Well, it came off a scramble rebound, and you can see he's probably the strongest player for Southern Utah, so he can handle his own inside and get off his shot in some traffic. Good ball movement there by Oregon State, and again, now Haywood, the open look. Spotted up, down it goes. Three-point shooting, phenomenal tonight. 
Beavers have worked against this zone for a while. You can see they've practiced against it. And Joe C doing a good job with distribution. He's leading the team in assists tonight. Eight different Oregon State players have scored, so they're getting good distribution. And of the eight different players, five different players have converted on a three-point shot. Double dribble was called on Buse, and he doesn't agree with it. Ball got away from him. He went and dribbled it. And it's a turnover. The Beavers will have it when we come back. Oregon State 36, Southern Utah 25. Nikon Photo Tip for best results. Be ready to capture the moment. Digital or film, Nikon has the perfect camera for you. The new Nikon Coolpix 775 digital camera. And the Nikon N65 35mm SLR. Free Nikon clean and check. Sale, sale, big honk and sale. Pro Photo Supply. Come on down to Northwest 19th and Marshall. We'll see you there. Face it, extra cash in a CD player are good things. That's why Chevy Cavalier comes with 2,500 cash back or 0% APR financing. And it's equipped with a CD player standard. Hey, with 2,500 cash back or 0% APR financing, a night out never sounded so good. Cavalier, see your local Chevy dealer. Let's keep America rolling. Hi, I'm Richard Nunn with the WB32 weather team and a member of this year's Team Diabetes. And I'm Dave Harkin, one of the coaches for Team Diabetes. Join us this Friday starting at 1 o'clock as this year's Team Diabetes attempts 150 miles on a treadmill in 24 hours to raise money for the ADA. You can find us at the Portland Running Company in Beaverton on Shoals Ferry Road. We'll see you there. The Hollywood Video Winter Wonderland presented by Thriftway is now open at Portland International Raceway. Come out now through this Sunday and you'll receive a free commemorative ornament while supplies last. Attention all kids 12 and under. The Junior Benny Beaver Club is just for you. Members receive a free Junior Benny t-shirt, membership card, free admission to several OSU athletic events, and much more. For information, call 541-737-4638. Yeah, Benny's here tonight. He's having a good time, and so are the Beaver fans as Oregon State leads Southern Utah 36-25 with just about two minutes left here in this first half. And three-point shooting has been the difference. Oregon State 7 of 12 beyond the arc. They are shooting 54% as a team. Southern Utah is actually shooting 50%, but they just have not gotten up enough shots, and they haven't made as many three-pointers as Oregon State. And it hurt a little bit by turnovers. 11 thus far. There's the three-point shooting season today. Big diff. Beavers turn it over now. Southern Utah with a chance to cut into the lead here at the half. Southern Utah with wins over Fort Lewis and Adams State. Losses to Stanford and Idaho State on the road. Jimmy Haywood again defensively stepping in as uh, Ross Day was cutting from the weak side, trying to go down the lane, and Haywood stepped in and drew the offensive foul. The Beavers with wins over Northern Colorado, Alaska, Anchorage, San Diego. Tough losses after leading by double-digit figures to, North, uh, to uh, Texas and St. John's. Had a chance, what were they, up 14 against uh, Texas? Uh, and a wide open three pointer, doesn't go. Texas came back, hit a three, and the momentum changed there. Of course, Texas a very physical team. And then had a chance to get St. John's up by 13 in the second half, let that get away. But a learning experience, and this team will grow, and you Beaver fans are going to have some fun this year, I think. Well, they've let it to happen every game. So they've been able to get out of the box, uh, just trying to find a way to finish in some games. And I know after that game against St. John's, which was extremely difficult to take, because they felt they should have won the basketball game, Richie McKay the coaches stayed in the locker room for a time, talked things over, and Richie talked to him about, hey, you got to finish, and uh, what can we do to get that done? And that's been the focus, trying to finish games and get the W. Beavers up by 13. Collins. Uh, Ross Day, 34, is in now as well. Collins looking to shoot. Day has range. He launches the three. No good. Buse with a good rebound. Kicked it outside. Boy, that's a nice play, but another bad finish. And C chases it down for Oregon State. 
And 30 second timeout called here. Timeout called by Oregon State. Richie says, hey, let's get a good shot here. One minute left here in the first half. Richie McKay's team up 38 to 25. Good start here for the Beavers tonight. Remember that they do play Arizona before the holidays this year at the Pac-10 with its tournament. Um, you can see the schedule there. This is a sixth game of the month of November, a school record, yet they only play six in December, which ties the school record for fewest games in the month of December. So busy now, not so busy later. I remember one year, and I'd have to go back to look in the books to see when it was, but I, I believe the Pac-10 season actually opened in late November. You might be as right. As the Oregon and Oregon State schools played the Arizona schools in a late November game for some reason. There are two games. But before Christmas, and then, then they come back a couple of weeks later and play the Arizona schools again. So a bizarre start to the Pac-10 season for Oregon State playing the Arizona schools four straight times. There are worse trips to make in January. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Jimmy Haywood really has oh. a nice stroke going tonight. And the Beavers with 40 points in the first half. They've been averaging about 32, 33 per first half. Yeah, in fact, 34 in the first half of the year, 33 in the second half uh, throughout the season. They've held their opponents this year in the first half to 28 points, and they're under that for the night. Are the Thunderbirds. 10 on the shot clock, 12 on the game clock. Collins being double teamed, the Beavers making it tough on him. Inside, this is Day, no good, and see the rebound. He's not going to get the shot away, I don't think. Well, he does. He doesn't go. And the Beavers have a 15-point lead at halftime. Oregon State coach Richie McKay has to be awfully happy with the way things have gone to this point for the Beavers as they lead it 40. 25 here at the break. The Beaver fans here in the Beaver Dam, they're certainly excited for the way things are going. And I believe we have uh, Todd McKim standing by with Coach McKay. Well, Coach, uh, you're hitting the three-pointers tonight, shooting the ball outstanding from the perimeter. Yeah, Todd, I think we're getting some good open looks. We're moving the ball well, penetrating the zone a little bit, and our guys are down ready, knocking them down. Done a good job of attacking the zone defensively as well. Your team has done a good job of denying their best basketball player. Yeah, we, we got to keep Buse and limit his touches because he's a he's a very good player, a Pac-10 type player. So I'm proud of our effort in the first half, but we've had some good leads in the first half. Now we got to continue this and uh, finish it here in the second half with a similar performance. All right, good luck in the second Thanks, half. Todd. All right, Scott, back to you. Thank you, Todd. A 13 to 4 run over the last four minutes gives the Beavers that 40. 25 halftime advantage. Scott Lynn and Todd McKim with you here in Corvallis on the Beaver Sports Network. Potato Express. Potato, man! You can lose this. Potato Express is already peeled and pre-cooked. And with six varieties, it's the easiest way to make fresh-cooked potatoes in just minutes. Perfect. Wow. You must have spent hours. Gee, you're worth every minute. Reese's Potato Express. Fresh taste in a flash. Whether an electrical job is large or small, it's important to get the job right the first time. That's why the switch to safety is on to NECA IBEW Local 48. Our electrical contractors set the highest industry standards in safety for today's complex electrical work. And our electricians receive the most comprehensive education and safety training in the business, assuring you of a job right the first time. The switch to safety is on to NECA IBEW Local 48. How complicated do you think your personal insurance is? Just think of what you own and lease. Your home, 
perhaps a vacation home, cars, recreational vehicles, jewelry, computers, sporting goods, collections, and on and on. What would happen if fire or theft occurred? Or water damage? Do you really know you're properly covered? Fullerton and Company. The name means insurance. Russ Auto Group and CarSoup.com bring you car soup for the soul. Get your soul food at CarSoup.com today. Peace, love, and car soup. It is halftime here in Corvallis. Oregon State leading Southern Utah, 40 to 25. Scott Lynn along with Todd McKim. Hope you're enjoying the game here on the Beaver Sports Network. Philip Ritchie has six points here at halftime. Adam Maston has been leading the way thanks to the three-point shooting. But, uh, you know, one of the guys that I know you Beaver fans are going to enjoy watching all season long is Philip Ritchie. These young guys out on the floor right now, they will emulate Philip Ritchie. That's for darn sure because this 6'7 junior out of Gulf, California, is going to have a fine Oregon State career. Junior college transfer. Our Dave Wenda had a chance to visit with Philip Ritchie. Oregon State fans have been waiting a long time to see Philip Ritchie in a Beavers uniform. He sat out last year with a knee injury after transferring from junior college, but no one was more eager to see Ritchie on the court than himself. It was real frustrating. I wanted, I just wanted to be out there every second, just you know, just to help help my teammates. It was hard to see him uh, lose in those tough games and then blowouts. And, it was tough. I think it's helped a great deal for him to understand Coach McKay, understand our system, understand what we want and what we expect of him. I think the difficulty was anytime you sit out a whole year, especially with an injury, when you come back, you know, you, you kind of lose a little bit of confidence, maybe a little bit of the swagger. It doesn't look like he's lost any confidence or swagger. Richie posted double doubles in two of his first four Division I games and is the only Beaver averaging more than 30 minutes a game. No one appreciates it more than Brian Jackson, who finally has some help in the paint. He's a great player. I mean, as soon as, ever since he got here a couple years ago, you know, he redshirted last year, but ever since then, you know, he's been working on his game, and he's just, I mean, he's just taken over the inside and for us, and, you know, it's, it's great. You know, I love it. I mean, it makes my job a lot easier to have him out there. Richie came to Oregon State after two outstanding years at San Joaquin Delta Junior College. But Oregon State wasn't even on his list of prospective schools at first. He's been recruited by UCLA and Arizona and, you know, pretty much everybody. So I called his, his junior college coach and told him that, you know, we'd love to have him come on a visit. Richie also made visits to Arizona and the University of the Pacific, but turned down those programs because he saw an opportunity to build something special in Corvallis. I wanted to go to a place where I think, you know, where I fit in with the players and with the coach, you know, with the whole community. A sense of community is something that's been important to Richie his whole life. He was raised by a single mother and by his uncle. Both played a part in his development as a person and an athlete. She played football, catch, taught us how to play catch, ride a bike. Um, not really basketball. She can play, but, you know, my uncle kind of, you know, took me to playgrounds and taught me how to play. His mother taught him to be gentle off the court, but on the floor, Richie owns a mean streak. He loves physical play and at times seems bigger than six foot seven. He's an animal inside. I mean, it, it's, I mean, he's hard to stop. I mean, I went against him all summer long, you know, and we had some battles. As tough and as hard nosed as he is on the floor, he's almost like, you know, a teddy bear off the floor. I mean, he's, he's a great guy to hang out with. Our guys really enjoy being around him. The one thing Richie likes most is dunking. But he's not limited to jams. Richie is a virtual smorgasbord of post moves, and he can step out and hit the jump shot too. I just want to win, have a winning program. Uh, I know this. We've been in an 11-year slump here, losing. I just want to bring winning back. Well, against that 1-1-3 zone of Southern Utah, the jams haven't been easy to come by, but he still has six points on the night, and his team has a 40-25 lead at the half. It's halftime here in Corvallis. Oregon State on top of Southern Utah, 40-25. You're watching it live on the Beaver Sports Network.
Apollo Billiards and Pools invites you to our new Brunswick Pavilion Showroom, an entire floor dedicated to pool tables and accessories. There's bar stools, tables, cues, and racks. Even customize your table's wood and fabric. Take advantage now and lay away for the holidays. Call for details. From pool tables to poker tables, you'll find it all at Apollo Billiards and Pools. When it comes to family fun, Apollo is the one. Bill Shonley here at Standard TV and Appliance Portland Showroom with a huge selection of top brand big screens. And right now, for a limited time at Standard, get no payment, no interest financing till 2003 on Sony Vega flat screens, Sony big screens, Sony wide screens, and Sony high definition big screens. Low prices, Sony quality, financing till 2003. That's your big screen headquarters, Standard TV and Appliance. our Subaru WRX higher than the Audi S4 Quattro and the BMW 330xi in both handling and acceleration from 0 to 60. But in one important category, Audi and BMW did rate much higher. That's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. Four, three, four, eight, eight, nine. Next time we'll put them up on the board for you. Four, three, four, eight, eight, nine. Welcome back to halftime here at Gil Coliseum in Corvallis. Scott Lynn along with Todd McKim. Hoping you're enjoying our first Beaver Sports Network game of the year. Of course, we'll do the Civil War game from here, too. That'll be kind of fun. There is a football game tomorrow that's being played, too, isn't there? Yes, I think Civil War football. Oh, yeah. That's in Eugene. That's in Eugene. That'll be a pretty good game. Be Beaver fans know that, I think. Don't I think they? everybody in the I think state the knows Ducks it. fans know that, too. <laughs> All right. Hey, pretty good basketball game so far tonight for uh, Richard McKay's club. Yeah, kind of a sluggish start for both teams. Remember, at the first official okay. timeout, both teams had five turnovers. Since then, Oregon State has done a nice job of handling the basketball. They've shot the basketball. Southern Utah has never been able to get into an offensive flow. Oregon State shooting from the perimeter. They had to do it tonight to win, right. and right now they are doing it. They've done it very, very well. Richie McKay should have been a little happier, I think, going into the locker room at halftime. Oh, he's an intense coach. I love it. Hey, first half highlights. Let's check out Southern Utah first. And, uh, you know, they had some good stuff going offensively at times. Yeah, at times uh, they struggled a little bit. You can see here putting it on the floor is Kevin Henry, his only two-pointer. They've had very little penetration by Southern Utah. They've had a rough time getting open shots. And then the three-pointer by Brian Gardner. But one of only two three-pointers so far for Southern Utah. Meanwhile, for Oregon State, they've been lighting up from the distance. And the nice thing for the Beavers is a variety of different guys doing that. The ball fake, Adam Maston, he's pumped in three three-pointers, leads the way with ten points. And a Brandon Payton off the bench. Did not start tonight, but he has a three-pointer as well this time from the corner. You know, guards like to be spotted up, don't they? Don't they just love to spot up and say, hey, I'm here. It's a lot easier to shoot when you got your feet set. You see North. Also getting a start tonight, feet set, he drains the three-pointer. And they have gotten a couple of inside baskets, all of them by Philip Ritchie. Inside, he's just too strong and powerful when he gets the ball down low, and he's had a good first half. Beavers, again, only averaged 34 points in the first half throughout the season. Uh, 40 here tonight, they're on track for a pretty good game, but as Richie McKay said when he talked to you, got to keep it going in the second half. Yeah, led at the half in every game, but that means they've lost two games when they did lead at the half. They want to finish it off tonight. Believe me, they're not counting their chickens before they're hatched. All right, we'll be right back with the start of the second half. Don't go away. It's the Beavers and the T-Birds live from Corvallis. Strike up the band. The Beavers lead 40-25 here at the half. The Holiday Power Sale this Saturday from 9 to 9. Shop early for incredible door busters from 9 to 11. You can save on men's Levi's jeans at the lowest prices of the year. Save 34% on women's sweaters and great-looking outerwear. Save 30% on men's dress shirts, neckwear, and dress slacks. Remember, gift wrapping is free. The Holiday Power Sale. Shopping never felt better. Why do people keep coming back to McMullen Chevrolet and Pontiac? 
I purchased several cars here from McMullen in the past. They've always treated me right, went out of their way to give me the best possible deal. I plan to purchase here in the future. They're easy to deal with, the prices are right, no hassle. Uh, they're just a great place to come. Uh, I drive a few extra miles to save the money. McMullen, Chevrolet, and Pontiac in Dallas, where customers send their friends. I don't think we should see each other anymore. It's the rash, isn't it? Listen, the doctor said it's just temporary. No. It's your website. I need more content than that. Hey! Our customers expect a lot from a website. Because at Progressive.com, you can get our price for auto insurance and the rates for up to three leading competitors. We want you to save money, even if it's not with us. You could save hundreds. Call Progressive today. Good evening, I'm Richard Nunn, a member of Team Diabetes, where in just a few minutes I'm going to be hopping on this treadmill right here, taking over for Alex Laws, who, by the way, is this year's Olympic torchbearer, and we are going to put 150 miles on this machine in just 24 hours. We're at Portland Running Company in Beaverton, and if you're wondering where that is, it's on Shoals Ferry Road, just about a mile west of 217. They're going to be open 24 hours in order to support us, and we're looking for your support as well. So come by and drop a buck or two in the can and help us raise money for the American Diabetes Association. How are you feeling, Alex? Great. Deacon Brian's next adventure, the best prices on the gear you need because the outdoors belong to everyone. Welcome back to Ralph Miller Court, Gil Coliseum, Scott Lynn and Todd McKim with you as uh, the first half is over and the halftime is over and we're ready to tip off the second half here. Interesting. Uh, Adam Masson's a little loose, isn't he, here? He's yes. the leading scorer in the game. He comes over here and starts bothering you. Look for his name in your game notes as you look at the stats here for the first half. Well, obviously, shooting stands out. Outstanding by Oregon State. 56% overall, 7 of 8 from the free throw line, 7 of 12 beyond the arc. And I like the assist total there. 10 assists on 13 baskets. Unselfish basketball. You like to make the pass, get the guy open, Drain the shot. It looks so good when the ball goes in the basket. Yes, it does. Oregon State with a 15 point lead. Now it needs to finish. With a three and two record, the Beavers, Southern Utah, two and two on the year. T Birds will have it here to start the second half. Leading scores Maston with seven, Haywood was, uh, uh, Maston with 10, Haywood with seven, Richie with six, and North with five. Well, both teams have had balanced scoring. Yep. Southern Utah has had seven, eight different players score, and Oregon State has also had eight. So a lot of people in the basketball game, and uh, Joe C. doing a good job distributing the basketball for Oregon State. Yeah. Off the bench with six assists in the first half. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, that's his uh, career high at Oregon State. He was only averaging about one and a half assists a game. And uh, with more time here again tonight, and better distribution. He, I mean, he's really getting the ball to the guys who can score when they can score. Well, and we talk about the fact he struggled from the field shooting the ball. So to be a contributor, you have to do other things. And tonight, it's been passing the basketball. Uh, Miles with a kind of a pull-up shot over Jackson. I think he surprised Jackson a little bit. He has pretty good, pretty good ability to shoot the ball down and good range. He had one game. Miles did where he was six out of seven from the floor, including a three-pointer. That was in his first career start at Idaho State. And oh my goodness! North goes north for the jam. He might have gone to the North Pole. <laughs> he brought back some ice on the ball that was up there so high. Nice feed, nice finish. Best play of the night for Oregon State, but going the other way, Donnie Jackson with the easy two. Yeah, Jackson with a nice up and under move on Philip Ritchie. Ritchie went for the pump fake. Look out. Oh. Well, Adam Mastin taking a shot out there. He's been fouled three times, about 25 feet from the basket. Well, they're trying to beat him up, I guess. He's knocking down all those long three pointers, banging him around a little bit. Fourth person, first team foul. And that foul on Jackson is his fourth. So he has to go back to the bench. And that's a huge loss. You're six, seven, uh, pretty good athlete, shot blocker. That'll hurt inside for Southern Utah. Haywood for three. No good. Miles with the rebound, and here comes the T-Birds. No transition baskets tonight no. for either team. It's a half-court game. 
Just Shooting at a premium. Hughes, no good. He's forced out one a little bit. Carrying the ball, called on Haywood. Turnover. Beavers have had, I think that's their 10th turnover of the night. They only average 12 a game for the season. But on the other hand, they had forced 12 at halftime, and uh, Southern Utah was only averaging 16 on the season. So both teams more turnovers than they'd like, I think, in this game so far. Yeah, a team that plays transition, gets up and down, is going to probably have a few more turnovers. For these two teams, not much transition, so you really have to put a premium on taking care of the basketball. And you better not have more than 15 turnovers in the game. Collins to the basket. Oh, nice drive. Jay Collins, the junior college transfer from Farmington, New Mexico. He's the guy that shot the air ball, but he's he's done okay since. Yeah, tough obstacle course drive to finish. Ryan Jackson been a little quiet tonight. The Beavers have shot it their way into the lead from the perimeter. Jackson double team. Richie to Jackson. He thought about three. Got it into Richie. Nice pass. Good finish. Philip Richie hammers it home. Well, all eight of his points have come around the basket tonight. Dunks and layups. And a good job there. You got the two big guys going back and forth, playing a little inside outside game with each other. They're getting the ball in Buse's hands every time down the floor now for Southern Utah. And you wonder how his ankle is after the half. You know, he had to sit for about 15 minutes. Sore ankle, did it swell up a little bit? He's trying to be active and aggressive at the offensive end. Working on Jackson. Pretty good defense by Bryant. Look out, that's a tough pass. Dangerous, Beavers will keep it though. Joe C checking into the lineup and Maston will sit down. I think they're going to take Brian Jackson out. I thought, like you, that it was going to oh, be Adam Maston, but because right. the, the ball is going to be inbounded in right there. You're right. He had to mention Jackson uh, takes a seat. Maston standing out of bounds right next to the bench. I thought he was heading out of the lineup. He just take the ball inbounds. And now C and Maston. He was moving the ball well on the perimeter. And trying to flash to the free throw area and then look weak side. See on the penetration and a great job by Collins knifing back to the steal. You know what? He's been an impressive player tonight. Very heady player. Good floor general. And that was the back door, but the back door was closed. Huh. So you can't go in there then? You can't go in that way. You have to go around. To the front door. To the front door. I see. Huh. And maybe the next time down they use the front door. They probably should. Maybe knock. Knock and somebody will answer. Don't try to go in the back door when it's not there. Beavers working on the round, very patient. Maston. See. Beavers are being very patient tonight, I think. You know, I mean, they've had a couple of chances to force something up there in a hurry. In a hurry. Of course, this is a turnover as I say that, but I, truly, I, I've liked the patience. They've had a chance to force a quick shot, and they've waited and got a better one. Inside the juice. Good double team. Ross Day for three. Good shooter. 50% shooter from three-point range. He knocked it down, and just like that, it's a 10-point game, and Richie McKay says, we need a timeout. Southern Utah says, hey, we have life. We're back in this thing. 44-34, the Beavers by 10. Reesers is often asked, what are the secret ingredients that make Reesers salsas so delicious? They're not about to tell you. Well, maybe they are willing to give you a small hint or two. Delicious oh, Reese's sure. salsas, specially blended and always chilled with spices no, that... Why don't you just tell them what the spices are? Well, okay. To start, there's a pinch of cumin, no. a dash no. of... How do you turn this off? Reese's salsa, not the most secret ingredients, just the best tasting. Secret? What secret? Whether an electrical job is large or small, it's important to get the job right the first time. That's why the switch to safety is on to NECA IBEW Local 48. Our electrical contractors set the highest industry standards in safety for today's complex electrical work. And our electricians receive the most comprehensive education and safety training in the business, assuring you of a job right the first time. The switch to safety is on to NECA IBEW Local 48. 
Tonight's game on the Beaver Sports Network is being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. By Reesers, with Reesers, you've got it made. The professional electricians and contractors of NECA and IBEW Local 48. Apollo Pools and Billiards. When it comes to family fun, Apollo is the one. Standard TV and Appliance with locations in Portland, Tigard, and Beaverton. By Bud Light, proud sponsors of OSU Athletics. Pacific Power, do the bright thing. Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. And by Fullerton and & Company and Kemper Insurance, where quality is never an accident. Live from Gil Coliseum in Corvallis, Oregon State and Southern Utah. The Beavers leading it by 10. Scott Lynn and Todd McKim with you. Hope you're enjoying it here on the Beaver Sports Network. Again, you see the extension of the 113 full court this time. Beavers break it. They're right back into the matchup zone. See working inside to Richie. Triple team. Great ball movement. But boy, what adjustment by Southern Utah. Great ball anticipation by Southern Utah. You'd like to see ball reversal a little bit. Get the defense flowing in one direction, come back the other. Tough shot by Haywood. Good penetration. Didn't get the, the finish he would have liked. Used the rebound. And he's playing well on that bad ankle. He's got six boards, only two points, however. And the Beavers now have the freshman North matched up defensively. Strong to the basket. I think Stan Johnson thought he was going to get hammered and just lost the handle. Expecting some contact. Back just didn't concentrate. Now North will come out. That means Jackson will go back on use defensively. And again, different looks, different size players, different quickness levels, different look for Buse, making a tough one. Well, Southern Utah has done what they needed to do. Down 15 at the half. You have to play it in five-minute increments. Now let's try to get three or four points off in a five-minute stretch. Do that a couple of times, and you're right back in the basketball game. Miles had a pretty good look there. Big rebound for Jackson. C for three. Yes! Wasn't the prettiest finish, but the end result was exactly what he was after. Hey, when you're struggling and you're two for 18 from the field <laughs> coming into the game, you don't care how they go in. Yeah, bounce around a lot. I don't care. And it could be a confidence booster for him. Hit his first shot tonight. Now hits another one. Day forced it a bit, I think. And the Beavers now. It was a 10-point game just a moment ago. Beavers have a chance to get it back to 15 or 16 with a three. Yeah. Oh, my, yes. He's feeling better. Thank you very much. Richie McKay saw him play 22 times in high school. He saw him first in the summer tournament when he was a freshman. He said, I want this kid. He was at Colorado State. He said, I don't think I'm going to be able to get him. Well, he got him at Oregon State. Well, he's a four-year starter for De La Salle, which is known as much for its football as basketball. So he's a seasons guy, and he played in a lot of big games. Buse finally getting a shot outside. That's his first uh, three-pointer of the night. He's now 8 of 12 from three-point range. So the guy does have the total package. Yeah, he really does. He could play in the Pac-10. Yeah. And a Richie up and in. Well, Richie left all alone in the middle of that defense. The Beavers have done such a good job passing around the perimeter that he was so open, he was surprised. Nice little touch from five feet. This is the first ever meeting between these two schools. So far, it's been Oregon State having it its, its way. And here's Buse. He's got back-to-back -back buckets. And seven points on the night. And I think he's trying to play the role of leader here, trying to offensively get his team back in the basketball game. They need a go-to person, and he's obviously the guy to do that. Trying to get it inside. Jackson threw it away. They came away with it. Here's Collins going the other way. Trying to work the ball for a good shot here. Good steal. Oh, steal by Mastin. He's got Johnson behind him, up and in out of Mastin. Well, he said he's done a little bit of everything, and that time he got into the passing lane. He read the defense, he read the offensive set. Now he's got 12 points. Mastin with 12, Richie with 10, leading the Beavers. They are collective 9 of 10 from the floor. Buse for three more. Oh, man. Don't let him get heated up. He's got eight quick ones in the second half, 10 for the game. 
Remember, he scored 17 in the first half against Stanford, finished with 23.7 boards, 18.7 rebounds against Fort Lewis. Also four steals. Joe C says, I got your answer. Here's your shooting slump. That baby's gone. Yeah. Forget the shooting slump. You know, in the shoot around today, he, it looked like he was still struggling. He'd miss, he'd shake his head. Foul on Jimmy Haywood out here at midcourt. But Joe C has busted out of that shooting slump. It is gone. History, totally. And Richie McKay's on his feet, encouraging his team, saying, way to go, guys. The big three-pointer by C, and with 11-12 left, thanks to Adam Maston Steele as well, the Beavers lead at 57-42. Looking for a way to work off that extra holiday weight? Try Portland's original Holiday Run and Walk, presented by Reebok Sunday, December 2nd in downtown Portland. You can run or walk, and there's even a 1K kids dash, and it all benefits the American Diabetes Association. Brought to you by Rosie 105 and WB32. Register at the Portland Running Company or online at pmevents.com. Think you've got to visit the North Pole to get the best gift selection? Cool it. At Car Toys Holiday Sale, you'll find guaranteed low prices on Alpine, Pioneer, Panasonic, Sony, and more. This Jensen CD player is just $99 installed free. Save on this Panasonic detachable face CD player. And get this in-car theater package at our lowest price ever, just $4.99. Buy two wireless phones and get $100 of free accessories and a remote control car free. For the biggest selection at guaranteed low prices, race into Car Toys. Car Toys. I usually visit Izzy's at least two or three times a week. The new Venetian pizzas are very authentic. I like the Venetian pizza because it's very soft and delicious. The regular chicken was good. I like the Mediterranean salad and the crab salad at Izzy's. The garlic cheese bread was also new and I did have a chance to try it and it was, it was great. I have the Caesar salad every time I come. And the cookies are really good. You really get your, your money's worth here. If you haven't tried Izzy's, you don't know what you're missing. Bring your appetite. The Hollywood Video Winter Wonderland presented by Thriftway is now open at Portland International Raceway. Come out now through this Sunday and you'll receive a free commemorative ornament while supplies last. Welcome back to Gilt Coliseum. Oregon State leading Southern Utah by 15 with 11-12 to play. Southern Utah with the basketball. Scott Lynn and Todd McKim with you. Hoping you're enjoying it here on the Beaver Sports Network. Fans pretty boisterous, especially those students behind us, Ty. And that's the first time, isn't it, Scott? They reconfigured Gil Coliseum. Now the students are now on the same side as the broadcasters. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> what if they share some, share some of that pizza with us? Yeah. Collins knocked home another three. Good shooter, good player. Second three-pointer for him. You know, the Beavers have ten three-pointers tonight, Scott. And the school record is 13. So they're on pace to possibly break that. Look at that. 10 for 16, 62%. That's also a season high. The Beavers had converted on six three pointers on two other occasions this year, but 10 shatters that season high. Again, patience by Oregon State, 15 on the shot clock. C again for three. Oh, that was close. North, North chases it down. And a long rebound. North doing a nice job on the offensive board. It's coming for Jackson out after the timeout. Kind of a lazy pass by C there. Well, I think Jackson might have got a hand on it, but now Haywood comes away. C all the way to the basket. He'll shoot free throw. A little guy into the lane of the Giants. Yeah, but that's going to happen. If he becomes a threat shooting three-pointers, defenses are going to rush out at him. And then he'll have the ability to go into the lane and create for other guys. So you hit those three pointers and become a threat outside that opens up a lot of different possibilities. Joe C was rated as the best shooter in high school basketball coming out of uh, out of high school. Oh everything's going tonight. Now yeah. he's bouncing yeah. off the rim. Well he tried to do that. Yeah he wanted to do that actually. That's when you know you're having a good night. <laughs> Sample is into the game once again. Haywood and Richie sit down. Maston. Peyton, C, North, and Sample in there right now for Oregon State. Ten minutes left here in regulation. Beavers by 13. Important time for Oregon State, wanting to finish a game strong. Well, and Southern Utah now showing the propensity to hit the three-pointer. They have four in this half. They can get back into a game in a hurry. And 
Yeah. You know, the Oregon State coaches were concerned that Southern Utah came in, nothing to lose, could play a little bit loosey-goosey, and even down now, you know, they can play with, you know, a lot of confidence and, and just go right at Oregon State with no fear of losing. Well, this team's shooting 45% uh, from three-point range. I mean, they're very capable of hitting the shot. Five on the shot clock. Whistle foul. And that's on Oregon State, and that's too bad. Because they were going to be forced to take a tough shot. I think. I think it was on Joe C. I think he checked somebody coming through the lane. Yeah, a little pork chop there with the forearm. So a new shot clock for the T-Birds, who with a triple to get it down to a 10-point game. Whistle, oh, oh, and that bails him out. Going to the free throw line will be Kevin Henry. I thought Sample had pretty good defensive position. It didn't look like he reached in, but the foul is called on him, and uh, that'll certainly reset the shot clock again and give yep. Southern Utah an extension of what has turned out to be a long possession. I thought they were going to give Henry shots. I thought he was in the act of shooting. Instead, it'll be the ball under the basket with the new shot clock. And you see Donnie Jackson checked back in. He'll play with four fouls. Right now, Bill Evans says it's now or never. Let's get back in it. The big fella, Chris Wallen with the basketball. Trying to work it into him, and Sample called for the foul. 8.59 left. Sample picks up the personal. His fourth of the game. Another of the young guys we mentioned earlier, sophomore, junior college transfer, North C and Sample all head to the bench now as Richie Jackson, Mastin Payton, and Haywood are in for Oregon State. They're going to go with the experienced lineup right now. Beavers had pretty good defense, had a little trouble getting the ball in bounds, so a quick timeout call. And we'll take a quick break as well. Here, 8.59 left in regulation. We'll be right back. Beavers by 13. insurance is. Just think of what you own and lease. Your home, perhaps a vacation home, cars, recreational vehicles, jewelry, computers, sporting goods, collections, and on and on. What would happen if fire or theft occurred? Or water damage? Do you really know you're properly covered? Fullerton and Company. The name means insurance. driver rated our Subaru WRX higher than the Audi S4 Quattro and the BMW 330xi in both handling and acceleration from 0 to 60. But in one important category, Audi and BMW did rate much higher. That's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. 58-45, Oregon State leading Southern Utah with just under nine minutes left. Hey, the NCAA volleyball tournament being played tonight in Pullman, Eastern Washington defeated Oregon State. The Beavers 17-12, first postseason appearance in a long, long time. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. That was in five games, we understand, and the end of a brilliant career by Gina Schmidt, who uh, closes out her outstanding volleyball career. Whistle Oregon and State. a foul is called. Brian Jackson looks like he had all ball. A little bit of a late call. Jackson going over the top here. You can see he gets beat. And then, well, maybe with a, on the arm a bit. a little on the arm. His hand was up there on the ball, but it looked like maybe his elbow to elbow. In any case, the official saw it as a foul, and Jackson to the line, he misses the first free throw. He's less than a 50% shooter from the line this year. One more look. Hmm. 
He gets the, that one to go. It's a 12-point Oregon State lead. A little pressure again, that 1-1-3. One, one, now trying to trap at half court, Jackson. Trying to work it inside to Richie. I saw one publication, Richie was noted as being the Pac-10 Newcomer of the Year preseason-wise, and he has a chance to do that. Oh, he has not disappointed so far. No. A couple of double-doubles. Okay. Only five on the shot clock. Peyton launches. He got rim. Great hustle. Is everybody okay over there, I hope? Brian Jackson, of course, he is willing to sacrifice his body at any time. Yeah, but Joe C was the guy sitting down. He wasn't really looking to sacrifice his body right there. No, Joe's thinking, <laughs> I need to get back in the game and shoot those three-pointers. That's what he's thinking. I don't want to take charges from Brian Jackson. No, that was a great effort, no doubt. Players from both teams going after the ball. You'd love to see that. Beavers very patient. Maston thought about it. Peyton lost the handle. Got it back and is going to be called for traveling. Good hustle play, but again, uh, was down there rolling around with the ball. That is a correct call. Tough one for Oregon State, but it is the correct call. And so there is a timeout on the floor with just under eight minutes left. Don't go away. We're four threes from having a tie game. Beavers don't want that to happen. I don't think we should see each other anymore. It's the rash, isn't it? Listen, the doctor said it's just temporary. No. It's your website. I need more content than that. Hey! Our customers expect a lot from a website. Because at Progressive.com, you can get our price for auto insurance and the rates for up to three leading competitors. We want you to save money, even if it's not with us. You could save hundreds. Call Progressive today. The Holiday Power Sale, this Saturday from 9 to 9. Shop early for incredible door busters from 9 to 11. You can save on men's Levi's jeans at the lowest prices of the year. Save 34% on women's sweaters and great-looking outerwear. Save 30% on men's dress shirts, neckwear, and dress slacks. Remember, gift wrapping is free. The Holiday Power Sale. Shopping never felt better. I'm sure you notice that dogs never talk about themselves, but they'll listen to you while you talk about yourself, and they're always interested. The art of listening to people's needs is an art form in which the people of Armstrong Volkswagen excel. For the wide range of Volkswagen models and Armstrong's lowest possible price all year long, we can match any driver's desire with a perfect car of choice and keep them interested in the conversation. When Volkswagen says drivers wanted, we mean it. Come to Armstrong Volkswagen. We're the ones to see. One of the young fans here at Gil Coliseum in Corvallis. Growing up to be a Beaver fan, no question about that. Hey, Beavers uh, Sports Network, the next TV game for you here on BSN will be January 19th when the Ducks visit the Gil Coliseum for Civil War basketball. It's right here on the Beavers Sports Network. Scott Lynn and Todd McKim with you here on a Friday night, the end of November. Hope you're enjoying this one. The Beavers up by 12 at Southern Utah hanging around. You always worry about a team that's shooting close to 50% from three-point range because you can get back in a hurry. Beaver stay with that man-to-man -man defense, trying to deny inside, and now Brandon Payton picks up a foul. That'll be the sixth team foul and one away from the bonus. Joe C. checking back in for Payton. He'll go to the bench. Sixth team foul or just a, again in a situation now where the rest of the game free throws coming for the T-Bird. And also they can stop the clock. Get some uh, points without time winding down. Boy, Buse is making a nice move. Lost the ball off the foot. Out of bounds. Turnover for the T-Bird. Beavers shooting 59% from the floor. The T-Bird's 49%. Good shooting night for both teams. And the Beavers can't go into a shell offensively. They need to stay aggressive. And they're still going to have to hit some three-pointers to win this basketball. 
You don't think Joe C is going to get past the ball all of a sudden, do you? I don't think so. No, I think if he touches it right about now, he's spotted up. Adam Master wanted to do a little cross court action to get it to him. There's C. Good patience. He went the other way to Master. Master trying to get it back to him. Yeah, he found him. C for three. Could see it coming. Those two worked that two-man game from one side of the court to the other. Good ball reversal, Adam Mastin and Josie. Those two players probably have played the best floor games for Oregon State. In addition to scoring, they've combined for 28. That's a three-pointer that is down and out. No good. Whistle on a foul. Collins will go to the free throw line. Good hustle for Jay Collins. Foul on Mastin. Second team, uh, second foul on Maston, but that is team foul number seven. So Collins will go to the line again. The best free throw shooter on the team this year at 88 percent coming into the game. He is a three for four tonight. Collins with 11 points, four assists. He's played a nice game. 14 point Oregon State lead. The T-Birds. After this game, play at Sacramento State on the 3rd of December. They've got games at Utah and BYU later this year. And yeah, they have a tough non-conference schedule. And quite frankly, they have to play some of those big money games, you know, at the Stanfords here at Oregon State, get a nice guarantee. And the in-state, of course, rivals with Utah and BYU. Jackson had the ball knocked away. It's still Oregon State ball. Because they have to fund their program, and they have a great home court advantage themselves. They huh. won 24 straight games at home, but they need the, the greenbacks to make the programs go. The fans are singing, saying, Joe C. They, he's become a favorite in a hurry, just a freshman. They like his shooting range. He's making some stuff happen, that's for sure. Well, hey, tough shot. A little six, eight foot floater. Shot clock was winding down in the final seconds. He would may have forced a bit, but maybe had to. Collins defended by Haywood. Nice job. Use. Oh, nice pass. That's why he leads the team in assists. And that's why Donnie Jackson's the most athletic player on this team, too, and why they needed him tonight. Straddled with the four fouls. You can see his athleticism in finishing. He's got 10 points. Use with 10, Collins with 12. Those are the leading scores tonight for the T-Birds. 16 points for Joe C. leading the way for Oregon State. Nice finish by Brian Jackson and again set up nicely by Joe C. It's the penetration against the zone. They were overplaying the weak side and he knifed inside and made a good pass to Jackson. And you know, really Southern Utah doesn't have any ability to defend inside once either Richie or Jackson gets the ball. Buse having some trouble with the footwork there, and I got to think some of that at least has got to come back to that sprained ankle. And if nothing else, probably Rusty having not played in practice the last couple of days. Well, Buse is a nice player. You aren't seeing the best of him tonight, but uh, you watching the newspapers, you're going to hear more about him. And there's the alley oop C trying to get it to Richie. It was a little bit too high. Yeah, yeah add an S to the oop part there. <laughs> the alley oops. <laughs> Phillips got pretty good hops, but not quite that high. You know, on that particular play, Phillip had the alley, and certainly C had the oops. Yeah, no question. Well, now Southern Utah has got to take advantage of every offensive possession, down by 14 with under five to play. Wow, Jackson was all alone, strong to the basket. Jackson was there, but that's another nice, strong move by Donnie Jackson. And it's a 12-point game, once again, with four and a half to play. The problem for Southern Utah is that they don't really look to have the ability to you know, press and extend their pressure and well, be real effective. Mastin for three. Boy, are you kidding me? C and Mastin have carried the Beavers from downtown tonight. That's 12 threes, one shy of the school record. Buse launches the three. No good. Out of bounds. Beaver ball. 15 point lead with 4.02 to play. Well, a good job by Oregon State to answer. You know, that three pointer is such a, it's a momentum dagger. changer. Oh, it's a dagger. Oh. 
I'll tell you something, watching Josie tonight, you can just see his confidence grow. I mean, even in this particular game, he started out maybe hesitant a bit, but after that first shot went, it's just been getting better and better. Nash now in the ball game too is another good shooter. Trap in the corner, Jackson. And fouled by Jackson. By Jackson. And that's all for Donnie Jackson. And that may be all. That be the Jackson five. Well, well, five. <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting all night. No, I wasn't. Jason uh, Bateman, that's the Jackson five. The well, he played a good game when he was in there. He and quite frankly, did. if he had been able to play some more minutes, Southern Utah may have been a little closer in this basketball game. It's the second time in five games that he has fouled out this season, and that's a big loss for the T-Birds. He says, you got to be kidding me. He came right into me. The Jackson Five, you're killing me. You are killing me. And Adam Maston is killing the T-Birds. Beavers by 15. Nikon Photo Tip. For best results, be ready to capture the moment. Digital or film, Nikon has the perfect camera for you. The new Nikon Coolpix 775 digital camera. And the Nikon N65 35mm SLR. Free Nikon clean and check. Sale, sale, big honkin' sale. Pro Photo Supply. Come on down to Northwest 19th and Marshall. We'll see you there. Face it, extra cash in a CD player are good things. That's why Chevy Cavalier comes with 2,500 cash back or 0% APR financing. And it's equipped with a CD player standard. Hey, with 2,500 cash back or 0% APR financing, a night out never sounded so good. Cavalier, see your local Chevy dealer. Let's keep America rolling. On the WB's new Tuesday. Is it on? Is it on? Okay, okay, a limited so. amount of time. I think so. All right, we are the Playhouse. Yes, okay? we are. And we got a new CD coming soon to you. Very, very soon. Playhouse, fun and traffic. All the Frank proceeds go. Stunts, American Diabetes Association. All right, now we got uh, four seconds. Yeah. Okay, they're going back go. to your regular program. There we go. Two on the radio. Tuesday on WB32. The Hollywood Video Winter Wonderland presented by Thriftway is now open at Portland International Raceway. Come out now through this Sunday and you'll receive a free commemorative ornament while supplies last. You're watching a special presentation of the Beaver Sports Network. Either one. Nothing but net tonight for Oregon State from three-point range. The Beavers leading 66-51 with 3.40 to play. Beavers averaging 66 points a game this season, and right now already have that as they lead the T-Birds by 15. Joe C. tonight, 16 points and eight assists off the bench. Wow, not bad for the guy who was playing high school ball last March. And Adam Maston with 15, that ties his season high and four away from his career high. Nash in the game as well, true freshman right on top there with the ball. A little more aggressive in the double teams now by Southern Utah, much more physical. C, no good. Rebound there by Doran Bosch, and here comes the th Thunderbird. Got to score in a hurry here. Not a lot of time. And yeah, they can't have 25 second possessions. But that three pointer is right through the net by Jason, Jason Baker. Baker That's his third of the year and it makes it a 66 54 game. Beavers still have some work to do. Maston to Jackson two handed stuff denied <laughs> by Doran Bosch. And free throws coming for Jackson, and what a letdown that is for him. <laughs> they, they wanted that one pretty bad. It's been yes, a frustrating night for Brian, and this would have been a good way for him to finish things off, but uh, denied at the basket, not giving up an easy two. Remember, Jackson been to the line three times, made them all. He was fouled on that three-point try earlier in the game. Well, Brian is uh, much more Philip Athletic this year. Mm -hmm. uh, took some yoga classes. Much more flexible. I think that's going to help him in the long run. Well, he played last year, you know, the last 12, 13 games with that fractured foot. Yeah. And it, that's tough. If you're asking a guy to play, but all, a lot of the Beavers were hurt. He had to play. Well, and he's a and tough guy. To play. Yeah, he's a yeah. tough guy, too. I mean, he, he doesn't leave anything on the court. He's willing to give up his body for the benefit of the possessions. Jason Where's Baker. Jason Baker been all night? All of a sudden, he's hit a couple of shots. Right now, 
North with seven, Jackson with seven, C with 16 for Oregon State, 15 for Masson, Haywood with seven, Ritchie with 10. Are the Beavers now to need to have spacing. They're good free throw shooters. Nash has to stay away from the double team, and Richie McKay saw the double and called a timeout. Yeah. Nash looked around saying, hey, wasn't the guy fouling me? But bottom line was, got the timeout just in time. He was in a little bit of trouble. Timeout, 209 left, 68 56. Oregon State by a dozen. Hey, whether you're uh, renewing your season tickets or looking to nab seats that may become available, think of Oregon State football as the perfect holiday gift. The Beavers will be in Research Stadium for seven home games next year, so don't miss out on any of the action. Call 1-800-GO-BEAVES for tickets to any Oregon State University athletic event. Beavers tomorrow at Autzen Stadium in Eugene for the Civil War football game. Richie McKay roots hard for that football team, but tonight still two minutes of business to take care of here at Gil Coliseum. And need to just take care of the basketball, hit their free throws because Southern Utah at this point has only committed 14 fouls, so they can be aggressive defensively and take some fouls, take some chances. Brian Jackson now has moved to the high post area. And north, north for three. Yes, sir. Ties the score record. That's 13 for the Beavers. Floyd North the third knocks down the triple. It had to be. And five different players have knocked down three pointers. Nice pass inside. Up and in by Butte. He's now into double digits with 12. Minute and a half to play. Beavers by 13. And now J.S. Nash is fouled. Beavers still not shooting. As you mentioned. We'll have it in the backcourt. Maston will take it out. Maston, one of the co-captains this year. Brandon Payton, the other. Payton, of course, that, that's interesting because he's playing the first year of Oregon State basketball. He sat out last year after transferring from UC Santa Barbara. And uh, the thing was, he was the hardest worker last year while he was redshirting. And Richie McKay, he, he respected that. Yeah, not a lot of seniors on this club, obviously. You're going to pick two there to be your captains. North with a turnover. Minute four to play. And the Beavers are going to, it looks like, hold on for a nice win here. And uh, that's exactly what Richie McKay said. I asked him what he'd like to see in this game tonight against Southern Utah, Portland State, and then Cal Poly. Those three games before you have to play Arizona here at Gill to start the Pac-10 season. And, and he had the perfect answer. What do you want to see, Coach? Four letters. Wins. <laughs> Remember last year, Oregon State was in a similar position. They were four and two. And then they lost their next three games before they went into conference playing in it. Just ended any momentum that they would get. They want to get three straight wins here now because that would, in essence, give them four straight, five straight wins going into conference play. Nice night for Adam Maston. He uh, can go to the bench. Well-deserved rest. A lot of new faces in there for Oregon State. Mike Coakley in at the point guard. Remember, Coakley started about a half a dozen or a dozen games last year. Some of the walk-ons are getting some time. Ian Elsa from Grants Pass. And there's Vic Remmers from Portland's Jesuit High making his first appearance in an Oregon State uniform here for the final minute tonight against uh, Southern Utah. Native Oregonians getting into the basketball game, three of them. Well, and the interesting thing here, it is a Friday night in Oregon high school basketball going on tonight. So, uh, you know, what a pretty good crowd considering that and the Civil War football game tomorrow. A lot of high school teams opening their season tonight. Non-conference games for the most part. Whistle and a foul. Foul number 23, Stan Johnson. Ian Elsa, number 15 for Oregon State, was a first-team All-Stater out of Grants Pass. We saw him last year at the Coliseum. Uh, had a great state tournament. There you see uh, Haywood. Very impressed with him at the state yep. tournament. And Vic Remmers is fouled. Remmers a fine shooter. That is the one thing he can really do. He can put the ball in the hoop. Well, and he's in the game, and he gets the foul that puts Southern Utah into the bonus. So he gets and the opportunity. You see number 30 there, that is uh, David Lucas, the son of Maurice Lucas, another of the walk-on players. Remmers with the first point of his Oregon State career. Here's a guy that a, a lot of people, I know uh, I know a lot of schools looked at Vic Remmers. They, they liked him. He's a fine shooter, good offensive player. 
Working on the defense. We'll have to work on the defense to play at the Pac-10 level. And hit the weights. And I have to lift the weights. There's David Lucas. I tell you what, there's always a place for shooters. Yes, sir. We've seen a few shooters tonight in this game. The three-pointers have drained, have been drained. They have. Great shooting night by Oregon State. They knew coming in, Richie McKay well aware that his team was going to have to hit from the perimeter against this tough zone defense. And they did. They set the tone early. Got confidence, and I think that's the key in shooting, Scott. You've got to have confidence. And tonight, Oregon State got confidence. Absolutely. This will be a nice win for this team because even though they don't have the reputation maybe in the in Oregon, they are a team that made the NCAA tournament, and you get wins over teams that are capable of doing that. Hey, you know, you take them, you put them in the win column, and you say, good job. Foul on Ian Elseth. Sends Kevin Henry to the line for a couple. Nine and a half seconds left. The Beavers leading 73-59. So the Beavers with this win will improve their record to four and two. The Thunderbirds will fall to two and three. Losing all three games on the road. One of those in overtime to Idaho State when Buse got hurt in the second half. Out of bounds. Beavers will have it for the final shot, it would appear. But the Beavers are going to win it. Jimmy Haywood and the Philip Ritchie there to your right. Adam Maston. It's a nice win for this club. There's another three-pointer. Pretty appropriate that that would go down here to end the game. It counts, and that's going to do it. Richie McKay shakes the hands of uh, the coaching staff from Southern Utah, Bill Evans included. And the Beavers get a win here, 73-63. to Nice win for Oregon State here tonight. You know what, Scott? It's a good win for a number of reasons. One of them is the fact that the Beavers are going into finals week. Oh. You get a win going into finals week, everybody feels good about things. You can concentrate on the academics, feeling good about what you're doing on the basketball court. So don't count that out as being important as far as this victory is concerned. We're going to take a quick break, and if uh, we have a moment, and I think we will, we'll talk with one of the stars of tonight's game, Joe C. He's a hero here in Corvallis. Beavers win it, 73-63. Whether an electrical job is large or small, it's important to get the job right the first time. That's why the switch to safety is on to NECA IBEW Local 48. Our electrical contractors set the highest industry standards in safety for today's complex electrical work and our electricians receive the most comprehensive education and safety training in the business, assuring you of a job right the first time. The switch to safety is on to NECA IBEW Local 48. Yo, Potato Express. Potato, man! You can lose this. Potato Express is already peeled and pre-cooked. And with six varieties, it's the easiest way to make fresh cooked potatoes in just minutes. Perfect. Wow. You must have spent hours. You're worth every minute. Reese's Potato Express. Fresh taste in a flash. Billiards and Pools invites you to our new Brunswick Pavilion Showroom, an entire floor dedicated to pool tables and accessories. There's bar stools, tables, cues, and racks. Even customize your table's wood and fabric. Take advantage now and lay away for the holidays. Call for details. From pool tables to poker tables, you'll find it all at Apollo Billiards and Pools. When it comes to family fun, Apollo is the one. Apollo. Tonight's game on the Beaver Sports Network is being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. By Reesers. With Reesers, you've got it made. The professional electricians and contractors of NECA and IBEW Local 48. Apollo Pools and Billiards. When it comes to family fun, Apollo is the one. Standard TV and Appliance with locations in Portland, Tigard, and Beaverton. By Bud Light. Proud sponsors of OSU Athletics. Pacific Power. Do the bright thing. 
Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. And by Fullerton and & Company and Kemper Insurance, where quality is never an accident. And welcome back to Gil Coliseum, where the Beavers have defeated the Thunderbirds of Southern Utah 73 to 63. Three-point shooting while wow, the Beavers 13 of 22 tonight. And one of the guys who really lit it up, Joe C., the true freshman, and joins us here. And uh, Joe, congratulations. Thank you. Five three-pointers tonight for you, 16 points, eight assists. Uh, and after struggling the way you had, this had to feel awfully good. Uh, yeah, it did feel pretty good, but um, I wasn't, I, don't, I wouldn't consider myself really struggling. I mean, my, my shot felt good and everything, but it just wasn't going in. I mean, every, every good shooter has their, has their off days. Just shooters just keep shooting though, right? That's, that's right, they keep <laughs> shooting the ball. How important was it for you tonight to hit the first three-pointer coming off the bench? Um, it, it was big, it was big. I mean, you know, when you come out and hit that first shot, everything, everything from then on, you know, it feels, it feels real good. The team knew coming into tonight based on Southern Utah's defense that you were going to have to shoot from the perimeter against that zone yeah. defense. What was the, the mindset for everybody? What did you think you had to do? Um, we had to move the ball, you know, get it inside, outside, swing the ball, and, um, you know, spot up, get our feet ready, be down ready to shoot the ball. We also talked about the fact that after you hit a couple of three-pointers, they started jumping out at you, mm -hmm. and you were able to distribute yeah, the that, basketball that, as well. That opened everything up, you know. Shot fake, dribble it in, kick it out to another man, open man, and shoot the three. And we were, we were on tonight. Well, next week, for the first time, you go through finals week. <laughs> Are you ready for that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just got to study real hard. I mean, you know, school, school, school's real important. Got to stay eligible and everything like that. And um, from then on. Hmm. Has it been an easy adjustment or a difficult adjustment, balancing both of those? It hasn't been that difficult. Um, at Dale High School, where I went, um, we did a lot of basketball, good academics there, and you know I came here. I think I was ready. Joe, how did it feel to have the fans chanting Joe C, Joe C during this basketball game? They they love you in a hurry here. Hey, when you start knocking down shots, I guess that's how it feels. <laughs> I mean, we we got some great fans here, and you know they come out and support us like that every game, and that, that's tough. That's a tough crowd to play in. All right, we got just another minute or so. Uh, this is a great win for your ball club. I know, I know Richie talked about how important this was mm -hmm. to get this one tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're coming in, you know, stretch now where we don't got a game in, in what, like 12, 13 days. So, I mean, this, this win right here, you know, gives us a lot of momentum. You know, we can go in and practice, start practicing a lot harder and everything like that. How about Adam Maston's play tonight? The senior experience, uh -huh. he kind of directed the offense out there for the most part, and he had 15 points himself. Yeah. And he hit some, I mm -hmm. mean, some real bombs tonight. Mm -hmm. Talk about his game. Um, Adam's a great player. I mean, he's real smart. He knows the game. He's got a great shot. He distributes the ball well. I mean, I can't say enough about him. He's a great leader. Well, there was there was one sequence we talked about on the air where you and he were on opposite sides of the floor and you worked a two-man game. <laughs> you finally got it to each other. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were skipping the ball. We saw the openings. We, yeah. we skipped the ball to each other and we were wide open. And, you know, he played a great game. You don't want to leave either one of you guys open, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We got, a, we got a lot of threats. We got a lot of threats, just not us two. We got everybody. So. Well, we'll let you go. I know you want to get down to the locker room and uh, maybe even get to your fan club here and uh, I'll sign a few <laughs> autographs. Congratulations That's on a right. great game, Joe. Thank you. You betcha. Good luck. All right. That's Josie. Congratulations. The true freshman for getting the job done out of Martinez, California. Got to be very proud of him with his effort tonight. So uh, a quick reminder that uh, the Beavers uh, will be playing once again on January the 19th. And that is the game that we will have the OSU Oregon, the Civil War game, the Beavers and the Ducks. And that'll be some fun. Of course, enjoy the, uh, the Civil War football game tomorrow as well. But that is going to do it tonight from Gil Coliseum uh, here in Corvallis. Again, uh, the final score, Oregon State over Southern Utah, 73-63. to 63. Remember, our next game here on the Beaver Sports Network is January 19th as the Beavers host the Ducks. For Todd McKim, this is Scott Lynn saying thanks for your time this time. Until next time, so long, everybody. I am Richard.